prophesy, we scream, we shout. We scream, the walls come down. We prophesy, heavens are open. you got to catch this. This is a move of God that has been carrying timeless momentum. We are not living in the kairos. We are living in the pluros. The word pluros comes from the word fullness. The Old Testament understood the seasons. But in fullness of time, everything operates in the supernatural. It becomes the thing that he's looking for. He's not looking for a building. He's looking for you. Doctrine is never supposed to divide us. When there's no cures for the diseases. When there's no answers in politics. When everything that can be shaken was shaken. Then the desire of the nations will come. The revival fire, it purges the intense of our hearts. He wasn't shaking it to break you. He was shaking it to position you. Everything that Jesus died for, we must live for. Stop providing God an alternative. Don't talk to me about the economy. I don't want to hear it. The just shall live by faith. Hey there, world. Thank you for joining us here on One Global Invasion with Prophet Zion Matthew. Up next is an extraordinary program that is going to change your life and help you change the rest of the world for Jesus Christ. God bless you as you watch. one more time because I don't want to wait to go to heaven when I die I want to go right now I want to go right now can we sing it one more time because we don't want to wait to go to heaven when we die I want to go right now I want to go right now see there's only two dimensions that Jesus spoke about and he said, pray like this. He says, as it is in heaven, so it must be on the So in heaven, there's lightnings and thunders and fire and rainbows and cherubim and seraphim. And oh my God, before the throne of God, that's in heaven. And Jesus said, pray that my kingdom comes. And when the true kingdom comes, the lightning that was in heaven. Woo! Yeah! The thunder that's in heaven. The seraphim and cherubim. Woo! Oh, and the cloud of witnesses. That's a, oh, they are surrounding us. Heaven's a dimension. It's the sovereign rulership. So wherever Jesus Wherever Jesus reigns is heaven. I said, wherever Jesus reigns is heaven. So Nicodemus asked, how shall we be born again in John chapter 3? And Jesus said, 
for you have to be born again. And the carnal mind said, shall we again enter into our mother's womb? And Jesus retorted by saying, unless you are born of water and born of spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom. And Jesus went on to say that you first got to see the kingdom before you enter the kingdom. I, I, I venture to say that for 2,000 years we have seen church, but we have not yet seen the full manifestation of the kingdom of God on the earth. Jesus goes on in John chapter 3 to make him understand. He says, for those that are born of the spirit are like the wind. You don't know where they That's come right. from and That's you right. don't know where they're going. And he goes on to say in John chapter 3, he says, and no man can ascend unto heaven other than the son of man that came down from heaven. Even he who is in heaven I want you to catch a revelation before we go on. Jesus said, no one can. Listen, Jesus, where was he standing? He was standing with his disciples where? On the earth. Am I right? He was standing on the earth. He said, no man can go and ascend into heaven. This is heaven. This is earth. Where was Jesus standing? Where was Jesus standing? He was standing on the earth saying these things. He says, no one can ascend into heaven except the son of man who descended from heaven. Who was he talking about? He was talking about himself. And he goes on to say something that will rock every religious mindset here. He said, even the son of man which is in heaven. Where was Jesus? On the earth. But what did he say? He says, I'm in heaven. Come on. Yes, yeah. Where was Jesus? On earth. He was on the earth. But what did he say? He says, even the son of man, which is in heaven. Jesus brought a piece of heaven with him. The son of God became the son of man so that sons of men can become sons of God. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I said? The son of God became a son of man. So that sons of man can become sons of God. On a Sunday night in the middle of Phoenix, we've been in worship for two hours. Come on now. And we weren't doing song items. And we weren't doing rock songs. We were singing in the spirit for two hours. Oh, come on now. That is a sign that a move of God is imminent. Because before revival comes, there must come a new sound. Oh, come on now. A new sound, it, 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 it comes before the new move. You got to catch this. So that's why what we want to make to manifest in our churches, we must sing. We got to move past, I love you, Lord, I worship you, I honor you. That is your personal worship. Oh, come on now. We got to move into the prophets, priests, and kings anointing where we sing and prophesy about the things to come. Because as we prophesy, so shall it manifest. Somebody talk to me here. The more we get hungry, the more we sing it. And out of our mouths, we create things in the atmosphere and that hangs over churches, that hangs over region. We are the generation that will reap where we have not sown. You've got to catch this. What we are walking in right now is not just our prayer. It's years and centuries of prayer of people that have been wailing and travailing and waiting for a move of God. We come in and reap where we have not sown. Oh, come on now. God is sending us into the nations of the earth as his ambassadors of the kingdom. The kingdom is not weak. Let's get it right. The kingdom is not passive. The, oh, you've got to catch it. The kingdom is not quiet. The kingdom is vocal. This present apostolic prophetic move of God is a vocal move. Oh, we sing, we prophesy, we scream, we shout, we scream, the walls come down. We prophesy, heavens are open. You got to catch this. This is a move of God that has been carrying timeless momentum. I want you to understand this. Timeless momentum. That means God started a fire.
Daniel prophesies it, about it like this. He says there was a stone that was cut from the mountain. But at the end of Daniel's prophecy, it says it became a mountain that covered the earth. Oh, that filled the earth. The church was the rejected stone. But this is not that day. This is the day where the stone is going to fill the, mount, fill the earth. And the knowledge of the glory of God is going to cover the earth like the waters covers the sea. For many, many years, we've had it wrong. We have lived in an appointed time of Psalms 102 verse 13. For the set time or the appointed or designated time has come to favor Zion. That was appointed time. But that was appointed time for the children of Israel for Jesus. We no longer live in an, in a, in an appointed time. We are living in something that appointed time is called kairos. We are not living in the kairos. We're living in the pluros. The word pluros comes from the word fullness, which comes from Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. Who he had in the fullness of time sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law. I want to tell you right now, we are in a fullness of time season in the earth where the heavens and the earth cannot contain what God wants to do any longer. The Bible says in Romans 8, even the earth too groans. Mm, you got to catch this. When the fullness of time, the Bible says, and the spirit, which is the first fruit inside of us, it also groans. Yeah. Oh, you got to catch it. For the revealing or the unveiling of the sons of God. The reference in Galatians 4, 4 to the fullness of time was in reference to a woman giving birth. Because when fullness of time comes, that fullness cannot be, are you ready for it? Postponed. Kairos is a designation or a designated time given to an appointed season. Fullness of time bypass seasons. Oh my God. Let me, let me help you. For many, many years, we've been trying to bring Old Testament reality into the New Testament. Old Testament understood the seasons. But in fullness of time, everything operates in the supernatural. It bypasses seasons. It bypasses designated time periods. It bypasses feasts. It bypasses days. It bypasses appointments. When your fullness of time comes upon you, ladies, you might know what I'm talking about. When that baby ships and moves into the birth canal, you are in your full season. That means the time of caring is over and the world is about to see the unveiling. So God told me, instructed me to call this meeting tonight to position you for what he prophetically wants to do for you. The, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Haggai, Haggai chapter 2. How many of you sense fresh fire on your life tonight? Come on, how many of you sense? Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Come on now. Let's see. Let's see how many of you felt something you've never felt in a long time. Thank you, Jesus. That's what these meetings are all about. That's what these meetings are all about. And let me tell you, complete the story. When I told those young people in Madagascar that we are the offering, the greatest offering that God can ever receive, you know what happened? They ran out of their seats. They threw themselves on top of one another. I'm not talking the next to one another. I'm talking about on top of one another. Their legs were sticking out of the stage. There was no place for anyone to walk. I'm talking about three to four hundred of them. Screaming out, God, I'll be your sacrifice. I'll be your offering, God. Let your fire fall on our nation. Where's our young people like that? Where are people like that that just don't sing, Oh, God, I'll be your sacrifice, holy and acceptable, but become the thing that he's looking for. He's not looking for a building. He's looking for you. He's looking for a people that are so sold out for revival and a move of God. Our churches have got to become on fire again. 
We got to get on fire again. Oh, we're losing our young people. Did you hear what's happening in the schools? They're dabbling with Satanism. You know what? There's no power in church anymore. Let's be honest. There's no power in church anymore. So they're going to witchcraft and the occult for the power. If we can stop playing our games and start crying out for the glory. Stop our politics. Which network you belong to and which network you belong to. Stop it. Let's weep before the porches and the altars and say, God, this is our generation and we will not have them lost. is never supposed to divide us. Did you hear what I said? Doctrine is never supposed to divide us. Kelly Varna says, you draw a circle to put me out, I'll draw a bigger circle and I'll put you in. When we begin to honor what God is doing in a man and a woman of God, And we can celebrate what God is doing at your ministry. And I can celebrate what God is doing in your ministry. And I can bring my dry twigs and leaves. And I can catch the fire. And I can take it back. And then when you are dry, you can bring your figs and uh, things to my ministry. Oh, come on. That's when brothers in unity dwell. God commands a blessing. Come on now. Tonight, I believe that God wants to bless us. I believe that God is returning to his church to bless his church, not only with finances, not only with health and healing, but he wants to be a blessing to us with the glory. He's coming to bless us with the glory. Say glory. Say glory. John chapter 17, Jesus prayed. He said, Father, the glory that I had with you before the world began, God, that glory, give to them. Do you know what prayer that was? That wasn't Jesus praying for unity. That was Jesus saying, that supernatural glory that spoke the stars and, and beings into, into existence, that put the stars in their place and put firmament to firmament, that breathed upon a human race and brought men to life. That glory, it's now time to give it back. As it is in heaven... It must manifest on the earth. Don't be afraid when God is shaking because he says, tell the people I'm with them. (laughs) Darkness is covering the earth, but upon you, the glory is going to rise. Things might be happening on the outside, but take heart. I've overcome the world. I don't know where you are right now in your walk with God, but I want to tell you something. If God was ever with his church, it is now. It is now. We are sensing more and more all over the earth. People are saying God is here. The revival fire is falling. The glory of God. You're switching on TV. You're switching on everything. Oh my God. God is shaking, but revival's falling. If we fail to understand what time we're in, we will miss the season. We will miss the season. Oh, you got to catch this. Because it's the fullness of time, the wheat and the tares are coming up together. Because of the fullness of time, oh my God, it's almost like day and night at the same time. Oh, but let me tell you something about the midnight season. It was at that midnight hour that Jacob had a visitation. It was at that midnight hour between night and day that Ruth went to the feet of Boaz. It was at that midnight season. Oh my God. When, 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 when Paul and Silas was in prison, oh, the angel of the Lord visited him. God has broken through the night. 
I come to announce to you that we just didn't want to have a meeting. God sent me to a people to prophesy to you that there is coming a fullness of time season upon the sons of God in the earth. It's coming upon your business. It's coming upon your job. It's coming upon your career where the devil cannot hold you anymore and God is about to stand up and vindication is coming to the sons of God. Vindication is coming to the sons of God. I said vindication is coming. The Bible says I'll shake everything. Everything that was being shaken was a setup. The setup was when the people are at their most vulnerable. Not you, I'm talking about the world. When they don't have any answers. When there's no cures for the diseases. When there's no answers in politics. When everything that can be shaken was shaken. Then the desire of the nations will come. Oh, you didn't hear this. You know who's the desire of the nations? The one whose name is the I am. The Elohim of God. The Al Shaddai of God. Oh, the ever living God. He's the desire. They've been desiring him and they didn't even know it. In the 70s, in the flower power generation, in the hippie move, out of a hippie joint smoking weed doping move came a Jesus movement. You might think that this generation is in the occult. No, 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 no. God is making them hungry for the supernatural God. God is stirring. Hey, if it's not stirring in church, it has to stir somewhere. I want to make you hungry tonight. I want to make you so hungry that you will never go back to what we know church to be. we got to be firehouses, burning furnaces, burning flames, raging fires. Our churches must be filled with Shekinah. Every corner, every corner, every corner. And the Bible says, and the desire of the nations will come in. Verse 8. Immediately. After he speaks about the shaking. You know what God says? You know what God says? He says the silver is mine. The gold is mine. He said all of this. All of these treasures. That was hidden in secret places. All of these things. That was in the hands of the unrighteous. All of those things. Are about to make a transfer. Into the hands of the sons and daughters. Of God. He shook it. He didn't keep it from you. He kept it for you. You see, sometimes when it's your child's birthday or when it's coming to Christmas, you buy things in advance. Okay? You keep it for the fullness of time. It's not that you're keeping it from your child. You are keeping it You might have been wondering why you could not get breakthrough in all the other seasons that has gone by. Because if God gave you breakthrough financially and in every area of your life, without you coming to the point of being hungry for him, your breakthrough would bind you. So we waited for everything to be shaken in your life. He waited for everything, every crutch that we had, every plan B, everything that we could look for on the outside to dry up. And then he says, son, I'm about to give you everything you have ever desired of me. He says, the gold is mine, the silver is mine, says the Lord, verse 9, the latter glory. Oh, let me read it in the King James. The glory of the latter house. That's you. Say, that's me. Say, that's me. Shall be greater than the former. Oh, my God. And in this place, 
I will give you peace. You see, this revival, this fire that's coming is dealing with the hearts of men. Do you want him more or do you want things more? Are you seeking his hand or are you seeking his face? He's going to bless us, make no mistake. But he judges the intents and motives of our hearts. I've come to tell you tonight, prophetically, that he's going to bless you. But let's find out what's going to happen first. He says, verse 10, in the 24th day of the ninth month. When is the 24th of the ninth? When is the 24th of the ninth? Now you can see why we had to have the positioning tonight. Now you can see why we had to meet tonight. Why the fire of God had to fall tonight. Listen to this. I've heard this preach so many times. But God gave me a revelation of this next couple of verses. And it's going to blow your mind. He says, from verse 10. He says, on the 24th of the ninth month, in the second year of the Aries, there came the word of the Lord to Haggai, saying, prophet, to the prophet, saying, thus says the Lord, ask the priest to decide this question. So now let's talk to all the men and women of God here. Okay? Let's talk. We're we, we, we wondering why our houses are not blessed. Ministry is not blessed. The blood of Joining us here on One Global Invasion, I know that your life has been impacted by what you've just watched. Write to us, catch us on Facebook and Twitter, and tell us about what God is doing in your life. We're going to pray for you, and we know that you are praying for us as well. God bless you. We'll see you soon.